Good morning. Welcome to the first Sunday of Lent. And the theme we're going to be thinking about today is the first R, which is resist temptation. On this first Sunday of Lent, we hear about the temptations of Christ in the desert and just before he started his public ministry. Perhaps the best way to understand these temptations is to compare them to the temptations that was placed before Eve with Satan in the Garden of Eden. In both cases, Satan appealed to worldly desires and fleshly needs. In Genesis 3, which is the first reading today, we read of Satan coming to Eve and tempting her with the fruit of the forbidden tree. Faced with temptation, Eve succumbed to three sins that are defined in chapter 1 of St John's letter. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Eve's partaking of the forbidden fruit was a sin of submitting to her own desires and disobeying the expressed will of God. In the wilderness, temptation, the temptations of Jesus, we see Satan taking the same approach that he did with Eve, the lust of the flesh. Turn these rocks into bread for food to eat, he says. But Jesus replies, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The lust of the flesh, you can say, is that temptation to satisfy bodily needs. After 40 days of fasting, you can well imagine how hungry Jesus was. He was in need of food for physical strength. So Satan challenged his divinity and his trust for God in his provision for food. Jesus could easily have turned those stones into bread, but that would have required him to do so by his divine power. And yet he never acted outside the will of his Father. In this temptation, we read of Jesus speaking of a greater provision and he does so by responding with scripture, the word of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then we come to the second temptation, the pride of life. Throw yourself down from the parapet, prove that you are God and therefore all powerful. And Jesus responds, you must not put the Lord to the test. The next temptation that Satan put before Jesus was one that he would hope that would elicit a sense of pride. Again, this temptation, Satan challenged Jesus' divinity and proved, wanted him to prove God's provision. Satan used scripture, although incorrectly, when he spoke the words of Psalm 91 in this temptation. If you are the son of God, cast yourself down for it is written, he shall give the angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash thy foot against a stone. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. Jesus again responded with scripture, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Let me come to the third temptation, lust of the eyes. All the kingdoms of the world will be yours, Satan promised him. You must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone, was the reply Jesus gave. So here we see Satan finally taking Jesus to an exceedingly high mountain and tempted him with all the kingdoms of the world. What a vision that must have been. As prince of this world, Satan tempted Jesus by offering him everything. One day, all the kingdoms of this world will be the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. But that day will come in God's time. Satan tried to tempt Jesus to take his rightful inheritance outside of God's time, but Jesus responded again, once more, with the word of God. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So what are the lessons from these temptations of Jesus? It's a relationship built on the power of the word. 
the power of the Spirit and the power of prayer. All of these are things that will strengthen us during our journey in Lent and help us to be victorious over our own temptations. When we come to know Jesus more and love him more, we will be able to say no, no, no to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. When faced with temptation, Jesus responded in wisdom with knowledge of, the God, his God, of God's will. By quoting scripture, <clears throat> we too have the word of God as a mighty weapon against temptation. If we take the time to read and study, how about trying this in this word, year of the word? The Holy Spirit is powerful in strengthening us. Just before Jesus' experience in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit descended on him in his baptism and then led him into the wilderness. We too have the power of the Holy Spirit to lead and strengthen us. And finally, prayer, the most powerful weapon we have to strengthen us. Jesus had completed a time of spiritual discipline, a time of fasting. In the Jewish practice, fasting was always accompanied by prayer. Prayer is of the utmost importance. And the Bible tells us Jesus often withdrew to spend time alone with his Father, to be refreshed and strengthened with this intimate relationship that they enjoy. So we too obtain peace and obtain an intimate relationship with God our Father through prayer. <clears throat>